Hello everyone, it's your girl, I'm going to say a little cold. I'm coming to you straight out of NYC on this quiet, cold Monday evening. So, as you all may know or may not know, I am a huge fan of the Academy Awards. Yes, I know it's strange that a black woman who's young is a fan of the awards. Yes, I've watched it since I was 16 consecutively since I was 16 but I used to watch it also when I was a little girl but I would also have to go to bed because the show used to come on in Monday evenings and it would air at 8 sometimes 8 30 but it's like you got to go to bed by 9 so I never got to really see the awards being distributed maybe except for maybe one in the acting category because that's like my favorite categories so this year I did something different I didn't watch the ceremony live for the first time I didn't watch it live and at first I felt bad because I don't have a tv okay and I've been streaming the award ceremony since 2020 but the difference is, is that I chose to not stream it this year and wait until the next day because I wasn't going to pay 65 to $75 to stream a, to, for live streaming just to see one show. I'm not doing it. Second of all, I'm not a fan of Will Packer. I've said this before. His movies mostly are are okay i haven't seen girls trip i haven't seen i wasn't really into thing like a man or anything like that but my issue was how he treated monique when her trailer blew up and when she was concerned he didn't seem concerned so after that i was like i can't with him that's that's very scary but when i saw that the show was going to be hosted by wanda sykes regina hall and Amy Schumer, I said, this is a disaster. First of all, that's oil and water right then and there. Regina Hall is not, she does comedic movies, but she's not a comedian, okay? Wanda Sykes, she's not mainstream like she's been like two decades ago. Then Amy Schumer is not the most likable person in the room. Let's just keep it a bean. So I said, this is not a good mix. I said, where was Will Packer? What was he thinking? I said, it's going to be chaos. Then when I heard that they were going to have a DJ and set up an orchestra. Now, this is where many people may disagree with me. I'm a traditionalist when it comes to the Oscars. I like to hear the violins being played. I like to hear the trumpets, the clarinets, the wood instruments. The classical drum, boom, boom, boom. I like to hear that on that show. I don't like to hear music that I would listen to at the club, listen to at the BET Awards. The BET Award atmosphere should not be at the Oscars, okay? I'm just going to keep it real. Now, it wasn't like BET solely. But you could tell if you are an avid Oscar watcher, this was not, you didn't really even feel, get the sense that this was the Oscars. I felt that the Oscars was more the Oscars last year when they had to split it up from the Dolby um, Theater to, um, or maybe the Kodak Theater, but I think it was the Dolby Theater to the Kodak Theater. That's what it was. They gave out the awards there. And I felt that even though it was more intimate, it was smaller, I actually enjoyed it. Especially the year that we previously had, you know, as a, as a world. But what was very good about that year, you didn't have a host. So the award show had finished around about 11.10 p.m. That's basically um, Eastern time. Whereas... And Central is 7. And in California, it starts at 5. It starts at 5. So when it's over at like 11.30, like Eastern Standard Time, it's over at 8.30. Okay? 
which is why they have a lot of time to like, you know, be outside because it's late in, in where I'm at in New York, but it's, you know, still, you know, it's still evening, so to speak. So the problem with it, I'm going to go by hand. One, no more host. The past three years prove you don't need a host for the show. It runs better without a host with just presenters and winners. Okay. Number two, Will Packer should not have produced it. He should not have. No. He should not have. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Number three, the way it started off, I don't have anything against DJ Khaled, but I don't need people coming there. I don't... I, I I just want I, the, the Oscars is the last thing we have in like the arts that's like really classy, and it's one thing to joke, and I'm gonna get to that later. But it's another thing to come on there and act hood, act ratchet, act you know goofy, act you know slovenly, act um and ratchet is is not just like you know ghetto. It's also like tra- like trash, trashy, you know. And I want to see class. When I look at the Oscars, I look at class, okay? My parents were born in 1939. So my parents are used, used to listen to the Oscars. And when they started watching it, you had to, when it was televised, you had to be classy. Um, another thing that I did not like, it was too long. And you didn't have the winners of certain categories live. And it was as if it was their roles in the movies are important. That was the first time in history. Every person who has won an award in any category, it has been live. The only ones that aren't ever live is the ones like the Governor's Award. Because that one is months ago. It's months prior. When I saw that, Will Packer's decision to do that, I said, you don't know the Oscars. You don't know the Oscars because that's part of Oscars. You're not producing the Grammys where, because of so many categories, you can't have, you can't have all of them air. But it's only 29 categories. In a three-hour time span, they've aired them before. You can air them again. But what it was is that you wanted to have those stupid comedic skits, which was unnecessary. It was totally unnecessary, okay? And you must never host, must never produce the Oscars again. Also, the writing was not good. Even Wanda Sykes' jokes was not good. And Wanda Sykes is funny. To me, Wanda Sykes is funny. She's not funny like Monique, Adele Givens, but to me, she's funny. She's funny, in my opinion, but she's funny in her own way. Her humor is more geared to white people, okay? Let's just put it like that. Okay, so I'm going to say this about the winners. The man who won for Coda, that was so touching and poignant, okay? That was a very important win, Okay? Because he's the first male deaf actor or deaf male actor to win an Oscar. He's the second deaf man to win an Oscar, deaf person to win an Oscar after his co star Marley Matlin in 1986, Children of a Lesser God. Okay? But with him, unlike Marley, Marley can communicate verbally. I don't think he can. But it was just so touching because the way. He stood up and, you know, he didn't really know at first until the lady from Minory was just, you know, doing a hand justice. And and then he looked and was like, kind of realized like, oh, and then they told him and they announced it and they saw it and he saw it and it was just touching. And um, I think his name is Troy Costa, um, let me look it up. But I just thought that that was just so poignant. Another thing, Ariana DeBose. I'm going to talk about her for a quick second. Ariana DeBose, I haven't seen West Side Story, but the girl is very talented. I remember when she was on So You Think and Dance. 
She didn't make it into the top 12, but um, she made it into um, the top 20. Now, here's my thing. I think she's very talented, but she has to be careful with something. And that is you can't allow them to make you a poster child for the community. Because now you're the first openly queer woman and queer woman of color to win an Oscar. You're going to always be that person. People are going to expect you to really go hard for the community because I feel that it just wasn't her talent that got her to Oscar. It was because she was part of the community. I saw Anjanou Ellis' performance and it was out of this world in King Richard. She did the damn thing. And I I'm, I rooted for both, but I rooted more so for Anjanou because I saw the movie thoroughly. And I feel that if it wasn't for Ariana DeBose being queer, I think that award would have went to Anjanou Ellis. I really think so. That's just my opinion. I also want to talk about Jessica Chastain. I knew that she was going to win the Oscar for Best Leading Actress, Best Actress in a Leading Role for the Oscar Timmy Faye. I saw that movie. That movie was excellent. She played that role. And how she would talk like, I know. Oh, no, Mom. Dad. I know. You know, I just want to bring Jesus to everyone, you know? I just thought that was just so funny, her voice. But it was a really likable movie. And it was really well written. And it got to the point. Especially when she had sex. What, uh, she was cheating on her husband. And then she said, oops, my water broke. And then she went there. And then, you know, he was she, she he realized she had an affair. But I don't want to give it all the whole story up. But movie up. But it's a really good movie. But to me... I don't care what no one says. The most touching moment. Outside of all the mess that happened. I will say Will Smith's, Smith's Oscar speech. And his win. Will Smith's win is the most important win. Of a black man winning an Oscar. Or a black person winning an Oscar. Since Hattie McDaniel. Sidney Poitier. Because Will Smith is the first hip-hop icon to win an Oscar, okay? And he won it in a leading act, leading category, a leading acting category. His speech, because of what happened previously, I'm going to talk about that. His speech was important, and the Academy didn't like it because he called out disrespect in the workplace. And that touched me. And I cried. When I saw it, I didn't see a lot. But when I and I was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I was trying not to cry. But then when I saw it, when I heard what he said, it got to me. Because it's personal. I know it's like to be bullied. I know it's like when they expect you to take abuse. But at some point, you break and you're like, enough is enough. I didn't break. But I pretty much condemned it. And I called it out. I didn't use violence or anything like that. But Will Smith winning to me is something that I always felt he should he he was deserving of. But I will say that he should have won in 2007 for the pursuit of happiness. The end of that movie was incredible. Me and my niece saw it. I cried. I wanted him to win, but he didn't win because of people wanting um what's his name to win. For um, Last King of Scotland, which he did. But Will Smith playing King Richard, I saw that movie, is an excellent film. It's an excellent film. And I think everyone should see it, regardless of what occurred between him and Chris Rock. I'm going to get to that later on this evening. What happened, he should not lose that Oscar. He worked hard for it, not just for that role, but for the last Four decades of his work in Hollywood and what he brought to cinema, not just creatively, create with create with, with creativity, but with the finances. 
the grossing multi-million dollar seven figure was it seven figure not seven figure nine figure one billion movie dollars um um movie um one billion dollars gross grosses at the box office how much record he sold in holly and um around the world mainstreaming hip-hop okay he did that number ones he went diamond almost that man deserves it and it should not be taken away but as a whole, the award show was horrible. It was just uh, trashy. And I hope that next year they go back to the formula where they don't have any hope. And Jessica Chastain, her speech was incredible also. But I think her moment got overlooked because of the incident between Will and Chris, which it wasn't fair. But Chris Rock is wrong on a lot of it. I just wish that Will didn't smack him because... That overshadowed his historic win. But other than that, Will calling out Chris was fair and it was right. And I'm going to get to that and I'm going to explain to that. I'm going to explain why and where everything went wrong. And I think that to a point, we must also remember that Will, Chris Rock has a history of going after certain black people. But he doesn't really go after white people jokingly. When he jokes about white people, it's all in jest. But a lot of times I've noticed like with certain black people, not all, but certain black people, it's the little undertones. And I think that this was Chris Rock's lesson. He has to go back to what he used to do in the 90s when he was coming up. Just be a genuinely funny guy. He's one of my favorite comedians of all time. And it's a learning lesson for a lot of people that year. But the most important thing, don't let Will Pack a produce the Oscars again. And with that being said, your girl, Miss Ann Little Cole, I'm signing off. Later.